Hi everyone, welcome back to the Syntax Byte. My name is Ryan and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to automate using Solver with VBA. So to start off, we're gonna assume I've already got a problem set up here. This is not a Solver tutorial. So if you need help with Solver, I would recommend following a different tutorial and then coming back to this one to learn how to automate it with VBA. But if you already have your problem set up with Solver, then in this video, I'm gonna show you how to automate it with VBA. So basically what we're gonna do is I have a separate sheet here, and on this sheet, I have a table where I have the average demand and a standard deviation. And for that, I wanna get the optimal quantity to order to maximize average profit in my little simulation problem here. So I have a simulation of 100 trials. We could probably use more trials to be more accurate, but this is just a little bit quicker in terms of the calculations. And so what I'm gonna do is I can use solver to solve for it once, but then I wanna know for each average demand and standard deviation, I wanna know how that optimal quantity is gonna change. So I wanna fill the table. And so right now, all it does, the VBA portion, I've also set up a simple VBA script to loop the table and fill it in just with uh, this, uh, each of the values multiplied beside each other. But we're gonna change it so that it uses solver and gets the optimal order quantity from our simulation. As well, over here, I have the solver problem set up. So if we go to data solver, and of course, if you don't have the solver add-in um, enabled, you don't have the solver button here, then you're gonna want to enable the add-in. And I'll leave a link down below to the Microsoft documentation on that. Furthermore, Solver is available on Excel for Mac uh, 2011 and later, and I have tested this VBA script and it does work on Mac. Uh, so if you're having problems with Mac, let me know. I, can, I should be able to help troubleshoot. Uh, it should work on Mac. So uh, no worries there. If you are using a Mac, I know VBA can be a little hit or miss, but this one should work for you. So in Solver here, you can see I've used a couple of named ranges. So I've just named things like my average profit and my quantity and my demand and my standard deviation of my demand, just so it's easier to access them in VBA later. I don't have to remember the exact cell names. And when I'm reading the code, I know exactly what I'm setting. So it's, it's just a little bit easier that way. So I would recommend if you wanna go ahead and do it, and you can see solvers inherited those named ranges. It's a pretty simple solver problem. So I'm just maximizing my average profit by changing the quantity, and I just want quantity to be an integer as my only constraint. It's a nonlinear problem because I've used the min and max functions throughout my problem, so it's a nonlinear problem. And if we go ahead and do a solve here, you can see it solves it. So uh, it, the optimal quantity ordered uh, would be 303 for an average demand of 260 with a standard deviation of 50. So those might vary slightly depending on the run. As I said, I only used 100 trials for the simulation, so it can vary a little bit, but it's good enough for our purposes of just learning how to automate Solver. So to jump into the VBA here, again, you wanna to go to the Developer tab. If you don't have this, you wanna to go to your Options, Customize Ribbon, and Check Off Developer. Open up Visual Basic. You can see I've already got a basic a bit of code going here. So my function is called solver loop. Um, I have the mean range and the standard deviation range, which are each of these like header rows. And then for each horizontal cell in the mean range and each vertical cell in the standard deviation range, I'm currently just grabbing the cell with the horizontal column and the vertical row. And so that's giving me the cell like so. So I take this column, this row is giving me this cell. And right now I'm just setting it to be the value multiplied by the other value. But what we really wanna do is solve uh, using solver. And so the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and go to tools and references and you wanna check solver. Otherwise, none of the functions will work. Like I mentioned, I already have my solver problem set up in the GUI window and that can simplify things quite a bit with VBA. So it is definitely possible to use VBA to set up the problem, but you can set it up in the GUI window in advance. And the key to keep in mind here, the key that I've found is that when you open Solver, if I open it on this sheet, you notice how it's changed. So it has similar cells, uh, but it's now doing things on this sheet. 
So the key is to make sure that when we open solver on here, it shows us a completely different problem, uh, the problem that it had saved. And it will save this problem with the file. I actually sent this file to my Mac to see if the solver code would work and it saved that problem. So that's not an issue. The key is that we have to be on the appropriate sheet. So we need to keep that in mind when we're calling these functions from VBA. That's gonna be the key. And so if we go over to here, we can basically just tell solver, hey, solve it and copy the result. That's basically the way to do it. If we've set up the problem in the GUI and nobody modifies our problem, then we know it's good. So that's probably the simplest way to do it and that's what we're gonna start with. So the first thing is I need to set up my problem. I need to set the appropriate uh, values for my quantity and my standard deviation. So I'm gonna start off by specifying sheet one. I don't want there to be any confusion here and I'm gonna use that named range. I have an average demand, okay? And I'm gonna set the value to be equal to the horizontal cell dot value. Okay, and so H cell is in the mean range, so we know that that's the one top across. Secondly, I'm going to take sheet one dot range. I'm going to use my other one here, which is uh, standard demand, which should really be standard deviation, but that's long to type. And we'll set it to the V cell dot value. So that's that vertical cell dot value. That's going to be the ones going down over here. Finally, uh, because it's a nonlinear problem, sometimes the starting quantity can make a difference in the end result of the problem. So I'm just going to set it to that H cell dot value. Of course, this is specific to my problem and, and isn't something you would otherwise have to do. Lost Dvorak, whoopsie. Um, I mean, of course, these are all specific to my problem. You'd need to set up any values you need set for your problem. Um, so don't just copy this code, do, do change this part of the code. Uh, you definitely don't wanna copy that part of the code because it is specific to my problem. Now the key is I wanna activate sheet one. And like I said, it depends what sheet you're on as to what problem solver is gonna solve. So the key is to activate the sheet where the problem lies that you're trying to solve where you have that set up. After that, I can simply do if solver solve, which is gonna launch solver. I'm gonna do true for user finish. That means it's not gonna display the dialog box. If you leave this empty or you put false, it will display the dialog box. Personally here, I'm trying to rapidly get results from solver and place them into a table. So I don't want the dialog box reappearing. I'm gonna do not equals to five. Now I will link the documentation below. Solver has like 20 different possible outcomes. Five means it couldn't find a solution. Um, so in that case, I don't really wanna paste the result. So I know something happened. There are other errors that could occur, but there are also multiple results, meaning that Solver found a solution just in a slightly different way. Um, so it's up to you how specific you wanna get with your troubleshooting here. It, it really depends. I mean, you could have a different behavior for each possible outcome of Solver, but the reality is that I don't think most people need that from their macro. But if it's not five, I'm assuming it found a solution, even though that might not always be the case. And I'm going to set sheet two dot cells, v cell dot row, h cell dot column dot value equal to um, sheet one dot range and again i have a name range for a quantity dot value and then we can delete this one here we can just change it to an end if and so that's all i really need to do given that i've set up my problem in the gui so let's go ahead and save that and what we can do is we can fill table and we can see solvers running at the bottom. We'll just give it a second to run. There's lots of trials to do here. Okay, perfect. So it dropped us at sheet one because we had activated it and we actually never reactivated sheet two. So we could add that in there. But you could see that it's actually gone ahead and solved for a quantity for each one because we'd set up the problem before. So that's the that's the that's sort of the simplest way to get solver working here. 
Um, and that works and that's great. However, there's kind of two problems with this approach. The first is that if the user changes the problem in any way, they're gonna run their changed problem, not the problem we had programmed the macro for. That may be what you want, it may also not be what you want. So that may be a plus or a minus, I'm just letting you know. It's easy for the user to change the problem. The problem is never locked in. Second and the larger problem is that it doesn't give you the flexibility to change any of the constraints while it's running. So in my case, that's not really an issue, uh, but for some of you coming to this video, you may have a problem where you wanna change the constraints and try running solver with different constraints and put that output in there. In that case, I would recommend setting up the problem in code. So I'm gonna show you how to set up this problem in code now. Now, the one thing I found is that unfortunately, even when you do specify the ranges as being on sheet one, you still have to make sure that sheet one is activated when solver runs or whatever sheet your problem is on. And I'm gonna activate sheet two at the end here so that it's activated. So you still have to make sure that the sheet where the problem lies is the sheet that you're running on. So I'm gonna start off here and before our solver solve, I'm gonna solve a reset. And that is going to reset the problem for us. The next thing I need to do is I need to set up basically what the target cell is, whether I wanna minimize or maximize, um, what I'm gonna change and what engine I wanna use. So basically setting up a problem with no constraints. So the function to do that is called solver OK. And so it takes set cell, um, and I'm gonna use named parameters here. Um, so that's sheet one dot range. Average profit. Um, max min val is whether you're going to maximize or minimize that value or set it to a specific value. Um, in my case, I wanna maximize that value. So that integer is one. So you pass one and I'll link to the relevant documentation in the description um, so that uh, you can see what it is. I think it's two for minimize and then three for a specific value. If you had a specific value that you would then spec value of, but I don't. So I'm going to specify by change. Um, and you can notice that it becomes out of order in the function here. So this is where uh, using the name, uh, the name parameters becomes useful. Um, so at that point, I want to change sheet one dot range of quantity. And again, I'm using my named range. And at this point, I'm going to use an engine description. You can use engine again, which uses the integers, but using the description is a bit nicer. And again, I'm going to use GRG non-linear, which should be the default anyway, but it never hurts to specify that in your code. And so that sets up the basic problem with no constraints. So if we go ahead and run it, it should do exactly the same thing as we did before, but we'll notice that they aren't integers. Uh, and so that should let us know it's running this particular problem, which is uh, helpful for us to know. So. We'll go ahead and fill the table there. Okay, so solvers come back with the results and it's pasted them all, in, well, our macro has pasted them all in the table here. Um, you'll notice that some of them are integers and some of them aren't because we didn't specify a constraint that they be integers. Um, so given that we haven't specified a constraint that they be integers, uh, it hasn't made them integers, of course. Uh, you'll notice that if we go to data and solver, it hasn't actually, uh, oh, actually it did reset the uh, the problem. So that's interesting. Uh, it does definitely change the problem uh, within the solver dialog. Uh, so just be aware of that um, if you are choosing to specify it in code. So how do we add a constraint in code? How do we add back that constraint that we had? So that function, uh, the name makes a little bit more sense than solver okay, which essentially just sets up a problem. Um, that is solver add. Um, and there are equivalent solver change and solver remove functions. I'll link all the documentation to all the sol solver functions in the description so you can check any of those out if necessary. Uh, so you set a cell reference here. This is the cell that you're putting the constraint on. So in my case, I'm putting it on sheet one, range, uh, quantity. And again, I'm using my named range. And then you specify a relation. 
And a relation is, once again, an integer. Um, four is the relevant integer for specifying that a cell must be an integer. Finally, you could specify formula text. That is the right-hand side. So if you're saying that a cell must be greater than 100, for instance, you would want to specify formula text to be 100. In my case, I'm just specifying that the cell must be an integer, so I don't need that. And so if we go ahead and run the macro again, now we should get integers like we did from the start. But the difference here is that we're setting up the problem every time in our macro. And like I said, there's two advantages to that. So number one, the user can't change the problem and mess it up on us. And number two, you can actually change the constraints while your problem is running. So if you want to play around with different constraints and see what the results of the solver would be, uh, you can do that using this method. And a nice little Excel glitch here. Perfect. And so we can see that it works and we got fully integers again. So that is how you can use Solver from within VBA. I hope the video has been helpful. It should work on Windows or Mac. If you have any problems, feel free to leave a comment below. If you found the video helpful, please give it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.